I may never be able to afford a house, at least not in the current political environment. Housing is expensive. Australia's current government have made it abundantly clear that they want property prices to continue to rise. This does not help new home buyers. It only helps those, usually wealthy people, who already own a home, or multiple homes for that matter. The rules have been skewed to favour the wealthy. The problem isn't just an Australian one. The UK has a similar problem with affordability. According to the article, it's not that housing materials are expensive, far from it. A 3D printer in China can print one for, for around $5,000. The problem is that debt has become too easy to obtain. In August, the Reserve Bank of Australia cut the interest rate to a record low of 1.5%. Borrowers can now access a mortgage at around a rate of 3.4% or less, allowing anyone to access cheap money. Cheap money is not as good as people make it out to be. When people can borrow more money, they can buy more expensive housing. This leads to an increase in house prices due to the ability of borrowers to outbid one another, ultimately leading to the housing bubble that we find ourselves in today. Thomas Piketty, French economist, found it odd that the Australian government does not impose an inheritance tax. The US and Europe both tax inheritances up to a maximum of around 40 to 45 percent. Japan raised its top inheritance tax rate to 55 percent last year. This doesn't mean all inheritances should be taxed. Smaller inheritances of around $100,000 to $200,000 could be exempt. So what does having a 0% inheritance tax do for the average Australian? It concentrates wealth into the hands of the few. It increases inequality and makes it harder for young people to get into the property market. People who are born into wealth almost always do better than those who have to work their entire lives to make a living. As I've said before, inequality destroys nations. It's a bad outcome of bad policy. Everybody, including the wealthy, should be fighting against any government that increases inequality. The wealthy seem to forget that if the average person doesn't have enough money to live comfortably, then that will have an adverse effect on the economy. People do not spend if they don't have the discretionary income. If I can only afford food and rent, then I'm not going out and buying designer clothes and imported furniture. Bernard Salt recently commented that Australian young people would be able to afford a house if only they would stop going out to expensive cafes and eating $22 smashed avocado. Of course, Bernard, a baby boomer, fails to identify the problem with housing in the current climate. He was able to easily pay off his home back in the day, but with the median house price topping $1 million in Sydney, many Gen Ys have given up bothering trying to own one, and would rather enjoy the little pleasures in life such as smashed avocado. The Greens recently released a video titled Game of Homes. It's a good commentary on the current situation in Australia. So as the title of this post suggests, there are only a couple of ways that I can realistically own my own home. Either save my money and hope for a massive property crash, which might happen in the same vein as Ireland, 2007 through to 2010, or I need to get into massive debt, which I'm not prepared to do. Obviously, the Australian government would prefer I do the latter. Low interest rates, expensive houses, a series of policies that keep the prices inflated, they're basically trying to entice us to borrow beyond our means. No thanks, government. I'll ride this one out, I think.